Genai has been hyped. I believe it has been. Do you think it has been hyped to I that level? I think it has been. Genai is hyped, but it is real. If I am doing a code and I have ChatGPT open here and it gives me the code, I copy the code code put here and send it to my customer. Customer will not know that it's a copied code from the internet. Software engineering jobs going away with say a Devon as well, right? What do you think of that? A country being a region is a very unique thing, and that's the power that India has. So I think we are the right place. Welcome to another episode of Tech Talks. Today we have with us Mr. Abhishek Sinha. He's the CEO at LNT Technology Services. Hello, sir. It's nice to have you here. Same here. If you could just start off with uh, you know LNT's um, Gen AI strategy for India. I mean. It is the buzzword today, and it is very important. So, if you can just elaborate a little on that. So, like everyone else, we started a journey probably a year back mm -hmm. uh, on AI. Uh, what we have done in the last one year, uh, couple of data points. One is we we took up a program of ensuring that our engineers are upskilled, cross-skilled on technologies related to AI. Mm -hmm. We had taken a target of 2,000 engineers. We already crossed 3,000 numbers and more hands are getting raised. We also want to get trained. So that's something we have done. Uh, second is we actually curated a very interesting uh, capsule. Our Global Engineering Academy did that on Gen AI for leaders. So we ensured that top 200, 300 leaders of the company were mandated to go through this Gen AI training program so that they are talking beyond GE and AI yeah. and they know what it means, mm -hmm. how they can converse with the customers, have intelligent conversation with the customers. Uh, I think the third thing is we did is we launched programs encouraging people to apply Gen AI uh, in different solutions. Uh, as we speak, I think we have more than 52 patents on Gen AI that around Gen AI related mm -hmm. uh, technologies that we've got in the last, I think, nine months. The other thing that has happened is as we started talking to customers, the customers started reaching out to saying, we are also exploring, we are also not sure. Can mm -hmm. you do a POC for me? So as we speak, we must be doing more than 90 POCs for our customers, proof of concepts. Uh, some are paid, some are not paid. But the fact that this traction in every segment where customers saying, can you just try this out for me, see if it works, right? And, and that is uh, catching. But the last thing is, we said there's an opportunity here we have so many engineers who are trained on Gen AI. Why don't we do a hackathon, a very unique hackathon on Gen AI? Uh, usually, if you think of hackathon, it's a 24-hour hackathon, 48-hour hackathon, right? You, mm -hmm. just, you, you're just coding, right? Yeah. What we said is this will be a different kind of hackathon. We'll give you six weeks, mm -hmm. right? We gave, you, we gave the people who registered, our employees who registered for the hackathon, we gave them problem statements. So we ran this Gen AI hackathon for, I think, six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And it culminated into the presenting their solutions, winners. So we had the award ceremony today. We picked the winners and we listed them. So sure. various things, right, that we did. Very interesting uh, partnerships and conversation with. Uh, and partnership leaders. with the hyper. Yeah. In fact, very important point. Exactly. The hackathons that we did, the hyperscalers, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, were actually mentoring the participants mm -hmm. on how to use their hyperscaler right, their AI tools mm. to get the solution. So I think the partnership, the alliances that we have struck in the last, um, I would say, on specific to Gen AI sure. with the hyperscalers, I think is also very important. I believe you have partnered with NVIDIA as well. Um, and uh, there have been other very major um, collaborations like that with, uh, say, for example, Intel, right, for the edge AI, um, you know, ca capabilities. If you could elaborate on those a little bit. So these are partnerships that we have done in NVIDIA especially, right? Partnerships we have, we have done to see how do we apply mm -hmm. Gen AI for a specific domain problem. Yes. We looked at uh, uh, using the NVIDIA chip for in the medical domain for a solution around endoscopy. Oh. Right. And that is how we use the technology. And of course, NVIDIA en engineers worked with us. We use our domain engineers, we use our architects and we together mm -hmm curated this solution, which, which definitely got some eyeballs because it was the right use of technolo technology and Gen AI for a real domain problem. Yes. See, using Gen AI for the sake of Gen AI is one thing, but how do yeah. you marry to a domain problem? I think that's what everyone is looking for. 
and this was a great endorsement. So while we have this lot of GNI work happening, which is, I would say, horizontal work is just technology usage. Mm. But the till we apply to domain, it will not really find its power. Definitely, and that is what really happened there. Yeah. Uh, with this approach, right, and with solving real world problems and solving their business problems, do you think um, you've been able to, you know, like shed that uh, worry of theirs and, and somehow like provide them real value when it comes to Gen AI? See, yes and no. I think you have to understand one thing. As a services company, mm -hmm. we work with customers' IP. Now, one thing I didn't mention is that we looked at all the data we had in our company, which is in a data lake. Mm -hmm. right? Our data, HR policies, all legal, all the our data, right? And our IT team worked on the data, modeled, and we created uh, use Gen AI. Mm -hmm to uh, reduce a lot of tickets that employees had. What is my policy? Do I have leaves left? You just go into the data, hmm. right? Uh, you put your query in, right? So HR now start doing value added work yeah. rather than answering queries on what is the insurance policy that a company has for my grade. That I can just pull it from the data I have and I can show. So we have created those platforms within the company. Yeah. But when it comes to customers, the data that we work on, for, that data does not belong to us. Definitely. That IP belongs to the customer. Every line of code we write belongs to the customer. Now imagine if I'm doing a code and I have chat GPT open here and say, okay, I want to get an algorithm on how to solve this problem. I put on chat GPT or Gemini or whatever platform, right? And it gives me the code. I copy that code, code put here and send it to my customer, right? Customer will not know that it's a copied code from the internet. Mm -hmm. Technically, it's internet, right? What is this plagiarism? What there is a bug in the what? I mean, this is liability. Issue. It can be a huge problem. Yeah. So the worry is real. So just because we have the capabilities to solve domain problems does not mean the customer is going to say, fine, start using mm -hmm. all these platforms and you can start getting code from wherever and you can plug it in my right. Customers are apps extremely wary about it. My view is that the industry will evolve. Mm -hmm. Our customers will evolve. Customers are themselves dabbling with usage of Gen AI, but within their boundaries, yes. within their companies. They don't, their IP belongs to them. Their employees can do whatever play with that IP. So if you create a private cloud, private, right, uh, co-pilot or whatever for the customer data mm -hmm. to be used by the customer employees, there's no risk. This is your own data. Like yeah. we did for our HR policies. You're playing with your own data. There's mm -hmm. no risk. I've had conversation with um, industry folks as well about the same thing, right? Them being very wary of it. Mm -hmm. Say a player like ADP, I've had conversation with them and they cater to e ERP needs and stuff like that, hiring and whatnot. And it, it is very important, right? Like um, your pay slips and it, it's very near and dear yeah. to everyone. And, yeah. and and they say that their customers are wary of it as well. And Janai has been hyped I believe it has been. Do you think it has been hyped to I that think level? It has been. My this is a, again. I wouldn't say it's a company view. It's my personal view. Yeah. I think uh, Gen AI is hyped, uh, but it is real. It so is the real. power of from a consumer perspective. I use Gen AI every day. I mean, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure all of us have started using it because yes, it do. gives you answers which you can quickly get. It's it's English, right? You it's like you're talking to someone. You yeah. ask a question, you get an answer. Right, it's it's so it's conver conversational, and but hence it's useful for a consumer. It will take some time to refine it to the use cases of these companies, right? Which is what I'm saying. So, from a consumer perspective, mm. it is an amazing thing that has happened in the world. But from a business perspective, company's perspective, IP perspective, I think the time has not come yet. Now, within the product organizations like Google's and all of these, right? They are of course creating all these models. Mm. They're putting out there if you. Do your queries, you get the answer. And by the way, you also get links to booking.com where you can book the hotel. So they're also making ad revenue. Yeah. Right? So from a product company perspective, it makes absolute business sense. But from a service provider perspective or customers who are outsourcing work, I think there's still some time to go. The, the evolution has not happened yet. Definitely. And a lot of employees has been have been very wary of it as well, right? Like a lot has been said about jobs, uh, you know, like uh, kind of software engineering jobs going away with, say, a Devon as well, right? And um, uh, what do you think of that? Uh, I, I don't know, it's contrarian view or different view to this. My mm -hmm. view is that 
the quality of human life will improve. Okay. The jobs that will go away actually should not be done by people. It should actually mm. be done by machines. And that's what Jenny I will do. So mm. humans will start doing jobs that their intellect is meant to do. So the work will not go away. You'll start doing better work, yeah. better quality work. All I'm trying to say is that the hiring, the number of jobs, I don't think they'll reduce. The same people and the new people will do better work. Okay. Because work is there. See, your question is valid. The work, there's a limited work. Yeah. <laughs> Right? And the same people. So now machines are taking over. So what will the people do? Mm -hmm. But there's so much work to do. Definitely. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, uh, so it's just that the content will change. Mm -hmm. That's all. My final question would be um, with so much happening in India as well, right? Indian hyperscalers trying to come up, say your Yota getting 4000 GPUs from NVIDIA, them trying to build up, uh, build capacity for people to train their models and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, as the CEO of LNT, where, where do you see India's AI vision and where do you see uh, LNT's vision as well going forward? We couldn't be at a better place at a better time. I think we are living in a beautiful age mm -hmm. uh, of technology. Uh, and India is at the core, at the center of that. Uh, I know if you, this is public news where I can share, uh, Intel Till a few, I mean, till now, had many regions, right? Yeah. You, Americas, this, that, and all, right? And India was part of, I think, Asia Pac region, right? Mm -hmm. Now, India is a region for Intel. They call India as a region. So it's not part of a APAC or whatever, right? Or Asia or whatever. India, it's a country being a region is a very unique thing. And that's the power that India has to do. So I think we are the right place. The kind of scale we can provide to the world in terms of talent, not just numbers, just intellectual talent. I don't think there's any other country out there. So we are at the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to LNT, and I'm actually answering LNT, not LTTS. Yes. When it comes to LNT, I think in many ways we're very fortunate that the entire leadership of LNT, right from SN Subramanian himself, I mean, I always, when I talk to him, I think you're a technocrat more than, I mean, <laughs> how do you know so much? He's a very, technical person and he he reads so much and right so right from top down the culture of technology and tech conversations is prevalent in the organization ltt of course is is does only that we, we are exactly. we are a tech company right mm -hmm. uh, but right from our chairman and that positions is very well because not many companies have leaders at all levels who are true tech leaders yes so if you look, even if you look at LNT factories, the amount of technology that LNT factories have is second to none. I mean, it's amazing the, the, the way, the kind of digitization that has been done in LNT plants. And I mean, we are investing in the Semcon industry now. There is LNT green energy. The, so these are all forward looking technologies that uh, LNT has been investing in. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, I think we are uh, fortunate to be uh, uh, at the right place and these technologies, the new technologies that are coming in, I think our ability to absorb them and help our customers is very high. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense for someone like Intel to make this move as well, right? Yeah. With NVIDIA capturing oh, so much of yeah, the market. Absolutely. India absolutely. is their yes. biggest bet, I think. I mean, I think LNT can very well, you know, like help them uh, with the partnership, help them be have a bigger presence in India. I absolutely second that. Thank you so much for your time. Sure.